what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clearing the crowd Braided in the hands, work us with a guy I don't need no toys I suck them up, I got so much pork What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani And you are tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview And today, we got Brooklyn in the building Who I got with me? Ew, your girl, Chrissy Bands, we outside Yes We finally at Talk of the Town Yes, thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for coming. And don't say finally, because technically this is a return. It this is. It's a revamp. It is. It is. Okay. But like I was telling you before, I love the elevation and the whole talk of the town movement. Like I'm so happy to be here. So yeah. thank you, thank you. And same goes for you because you've definitely grown since the last time that you was here. So for the people that don't know, tell us a little about Chrissy Band. Starting off with like, where are you from? So I'm from Brooklyn, the 90s to be exact. That's East Flatbush, not Brownsville, because you know y'all be playing. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I've been doing this for a minute. I've been outside. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a lyricist, okay? I don't just rap. I'm okay. a lyricist. So we're going to get right into it. What's the difference between like a lyricist and just like a general rapper? I feel like a rapper, like nowadays it got mm -hmm. so many different definitions, but... As far as a rapper, like, you, you put words together, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, you make it sound good, but a lyricist actually use words, have a play on words, metaphors, you know, different things like that, so. Okay. Yeah. So, who would you say is an example of, like, a rapper, and what's an example of a lyricist? If you had to pick one. Why you gotta put me on a spot? We just bought it. I know. We, we getting this started. Hot heavy already. Um, a rapper, I would say... Should we? Are we talking about like? You can say anybody. Cardi B. Okay. I would say I love her to death. She's a great ass artist. She she does her thing. Okay. I say she she's a rapper, and I would say Biggie is a lyricist. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Would you consider Doja Cat to be a rapper? Yeah. Yeah. She's lyrical. Okay. In her own little pop way, I, she's I lyrical. I agree. I agree yes. because I feel like nobody really gives Doja the respect that she deserves for being a rapper, but I yes. feel like there's no other way to put what she's doing. Like, she be rapping on the pop songs. Yeah, but, but if she's you really still listen to yes, what she's saying, she, she be bars. doing different sounds. Yeah, she do. She definitely does. Okay, so that was a little segue, but... um. So you're from Brooklyn. Now, where are you from? Like, what's your background? Because I'll be hearing a little accent in, in some yeah. of your songs. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the songs. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so my mom is Trinidadian and okay. my father's Haitian. But okay. um, I always rep the Trini side, you mm -hmm. know, because that's what I was raised around. So, right, right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So you got a lot of little mixtures going on yeah, in there. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say is like your favorite thing about being from New York? Hmm. The dance, the music, the dancing, the music, the, the loudness of the people, like uh -huh. the movement, the whole, I just love, it's crazy. I was talking about that earlier, like everybody moving out of New York. When I move out, I definitely want to make sure I keep a crib in New York. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing, it's like, nothing New like New York. It's nothing like New York, honestly. And I feel like sometimes like as a New Yorker, you kind of get tired of like being here sometimes, but it's like you always know that you're going to wind up back here Come on, the at some cheese, point. The icy lady. It's no comparing, bro. Come on. It's no comparing. All right, so you said if you move or when you move. So where would you move to? That's a good question. Right now, mm -hmm. I want to get a condo. Okay. In, in New York. It's giving high rise or just Um, I want like yeah, I could you know, I wanna see I'm I'm mad like humble and modest, even mm -hmm. though I could, you know, get cocky and shit if mm -hmm. I want to. But I like to save money. I like to you know what I'm saying? So as long as it's nice looking and mm -hmm. comfortable and a big enough space, I'm Gucci with that. I don't need no But that's for here in New York or just anywhere in general? Um Cause if you were to move I do, somewhere, I gotta have the I gotta have the fancy, and then I still gotta have the, okay. the chill. So if you were to move somewhere outside of New York, where would you choose? All right, I'm scared of the San Andreas <laughs> Fault in in um, Cali. Okay, so I wouldn't go there. Um, <laughs> I like I say probably like Connecticut or PA. Really? Wow, I was not expecting for you to say yeah, that because like. All right, if, if we talk talking outside the country, I would say Barbados. I love Barbados. Okay. It's really nice out there. See, I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to be beautiful from place. New York. It, does that make me wrong. bad? No, not at all. But I feel like, you know, every you are true New Yorker, right or die, as you should be. But I feel like, you know, everybody's go to's are like Atlanta, Miami. So, like, here in like a Connecticut or a Pennsylvania, you know what it is? That is so different. I haven't been to Atlanta as an adult yet. Girl. The last time I've been to Atlanta, I was a kid. So, 
Everybody talks about Atlanta. They want to move. You got to get out. There. Yeah, you but get I'm out going there. soon. So. Yeah. Yes, you got to get out there. I feel like, especially as an artist, there's so much. I know that's one that place be I haven't and been. You know, lit. that's crazy. But I'm going. Okay, it's supposed to be this the end of this month, actually. Okay, so we're gonna stay tuned. Yeah, because I'm interested to hear like what you think after you actually experience it. Yeah. Then. Um. So talk to us a little bit about like how you came up in this industry, where you started, how you started getting into music. Um. So I always loved writing, reading and writing. I was the best at essays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I wrote poems. And one day I did this poem about my pops. He didn't raise me. So I did this poem. My mom was there. And as I was spitting it, like every line, the crowd was like, whoa. Like it was mm. like bar for bar. Mm -hmm. And I shouted out my mom. It, like it was crazy. So I was like, I could rap. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. And then um, after that, I just was like, I started taking it serious, do, going to the, my stepdad's studio. That's where it all started. Okay. And then Nicki Minaj came out. Mm. Then I started going hard. And mm -hmm. like I said, I'm from the 90s. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, with Bobby. And then once he got signed, I started taking it seriously. Okay. So would you say that you look to, like, artists like Nicki and Bobby for inspiration? Or would you just say that kind of, like, motivated you? It motivated me. I do look for Nicki uh, for inspiration. Um, Bobby, too, of course. But, like, it's, like, as far as female goes, definitely mm -hmm. Nicki and Biggie. Like, I love Biggie. Like, mm. that's my number one thing, like. Okay, yeah. that's good. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay, so you you had said something I think on Instagram. You made a post and you said that 2021 taught you a lot of lessons um that like forever changed your mindset. That's what was in your caption. Oh snap. Yeah. You said that. I don't so know. I'm interested to know like so far we're like halfway through the year. What was it that changed and how has it been going for you so far? Um to be honest with you, um I had like you know, some snakes in the grass, you know what I'm saying? And I had to learn a hard lesson mm -hmm. that you got to always look out for yourself and make sure that you're secure and don't, you know, let other people handle, you know what I'm saying? And just do your own thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn that. And I'm glad it taught me to, it, it basically prepared me for mm -hmm. what the great things that's about to come now. Right. So I'm glad I went through it now. Then, right. Yeah. So would you say that that was like in relation to your your musical career or yes. just like your personal life? Yes. Yeah. Musical career. Absolutely. Okay. I feel like, you know, I wouldn't say time wasted, but I definitely could have been doing a lot of other things, bigger things, you know. Yeah. So was that like a result of you like following what like the advice of somebody who didn't have your best interest um, or like I'm gonna just say it I had okay. a manager that was stealing from me and oh, I had no, to learn really? that the hard way yeah okay I'm so, sorry that that happened yeah but thank God is when I was I'm not making the millions and millions right. yet you know it's good saying? for you to learn that lesson now when you yeah. don't have as much to lose not that you don't have a lot to lose now but like you said exactly like, better now for you to learn the lesson than to have to go through it later yeah. on down the line so how are you gonna like navigate that situation like moving forward when it comes to like who you have on your team who you have as a management like how do you how do you decide who's like a good fit for so, your team? So um, from now on, I control everything when mm -hmm. it comes to my fa my finances, um, everything on paper, you know, um, all the platforms like, you know, TuneCore, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And I just watch certain movements and pay attention to certain signs more now. Like, you know, you've grown, you, you, but you're still learning. Right, right. So I just pay attention to people's intentions. Okay, how they react to this and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just stay on point. Okay. I'm more on point now with myself. Okay, yeah. and that's good. Would yeah. you say that you have gone through any, like, rebranding as a result of, like, losing your management? Or has it stayed pretty consistent i wouldn't say rebranding mm -hmm. but i would say like definitely a new confidence a new look a new inspiration okay you know what i'm saying yeah that's like dope. that mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna get back into the music a little bit so how would you describe your sound if you had to describe it to someone i would say versatile because i could give you the reggae, I could give you the hard rap the sexy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying the only thing i haven't done i would say is pop um, but I do the storytelling. I do just bars and um, realness, authenticity, mm -hmm. basically. So aside from the realness and authenticity, when it comes down to like the reggae and like tapping into the different markets, do you do that because you enjoy doing it? Or is it like trying to just like keep up in different 
areas. No, I definitely enjoy doing it because, like I said, I'm Trinidadian, so mm-hmm. I love the culture of reggae, soca, all of that. Mm-hmm. It's fun, you know? And I want to show the people that, hey, I could do this too. Right. You know, I don't have this, just this one sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you hopped on the crocodile teeth. Yo, that went crazy. Yes. When I tell you, 105.1 and Hot 97 was in rotation. I saw. Shout I out saw. to Drewski, DJ Will, my boy DJ Magic. I love them to death. Like, it, yo... What was that moment like? Hearing was, let song, me tell you, because I've been on the radio years, because um, I have the A Boogie song. Right, Halo, you know, yeah. And that came out in 2019, so mm-hmm. my boy Drewski always showed love. He played that. Mm-hmm. However, my stuff has never been in rotation. As three songs, shout out to my boy Stepper, because the song with me and him, mm-hmm. Big Stepper, um, that was in rotation also. So it was that and two other songs. So three songs is, was in rotation yeah, on my both got songs on the radio, on okay? Both stations at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it was dope. I'm sure that like felt good. Like I don't know if you watch P Valley. Do you watch P Valley? You know what's crazy? I need to get into it. Yes, Everybody you definitely be need it, to get into P Valley. And I be hearing what? all the stuff about it, but yes, I need because to get into it. there was a scene in the most recent episode. I don't. This is not really a spoiler, but the song for one of the artists on the show had came on the radio, and they had turned it up. They were standing on the car. They're like, "Yeah, this is my nigga." Like that's really like you a know vibe. I'm crazy? sure. Sorry to cut you up, but, like, when I did the A Boogie song, of course it's A Boogie. So, mm-hmm. of course, you know, people going to gravitate towards it. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like when that played, he has um, the first verse, and he also has the hook. Mm-hmm. It's a long song, because I come in on the second verse. So, they had ended up cutting it when mm-hmm. they first did it. So, I feel like I never got my, I call it TLC moment. Okay. I never really got that. And then when this came on, I was like, hey, I turned it up. But uh-huh. it wasn't that. Because I, I, I already you. was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Aww. But whatever. I mean, there be other moments, right? Moment, you know what right. I'm saying? Okay, so you said that you had the best crocodile teeth remix. I did. So of Hands course, down. you know, I gotta ask what you thought about the Barb Nikki's. Oh, yeah. remix. Son, Nikki, listen, I love Nikki to death. She's the queen. Uh huh. When I tell you, um, she posted me before. Okay. What? She yeah, did. I was the final four in the Megatron Challenge. Me and three other yes. girls. Yes, she posted Shout me on Shout out to you page. for that. I didn't even know that. Yes, and played me on Queen Radio, and she was rapping the lyrics, girl. Yeah, she was yeah. rapping the lyrics. She was rapping the lyrics. Oh, you see, I got I it's on my Instagram. But I would always so yeah, she did her thing on the crocodile teeth for sure. Okay, okay. But, you know what I'm saying, Nikki? I know, because I was about you know to say, saying? that's a big deal, because that was one of the first, well, that was the first person that you mentioned when it came to, like, who you was listening to back then. So, yeah. like, to start going up in your career and actually have somebody that you looked up to, acknowledge I bet my you. little sister $5 that she wasn't going to post me. I took a nap, woke up to crazy notifications, and I ended up giving her a little $10. I was like, yeah, you was right. <laughs> okay, cool. And it was beyond the posting. It's the rap and the lyrics for me. The lyrics. That's what? That's, I should have had that ready for you. I'm going to have to look for it through my Instagram. That is dope. So um, walk me through, like, your creative process. How does it start? What does that look like? I would say I would get inspired and I'll start um, writing a cappella. Mm-hmm. But most of the times I'd be like, sometimes I look at, um, what's relevant and I'll be like okay I want to do this I want to okay. do this remix Okay. or hold up I'm in this mode to do this type of single like and it just comes to me and I'll write some music mm-hmm. most of the time it's acapella and I'll put it to something but um, yeah and I get right in the studio and then I'll I got like 30 plus videos on YouTube so mm-hmm. I, I oh, instantly yeah, I get into the visuals uh-huh. and yeah okay that's that's awesome hmm. when I'm in the studio I'll be Rapping, I was and yeah. I that's what laying I was it down in less than like thirty minutes. Or really, well, if my engineer was here, he could tell you. I book an hour. I do a song in like forty five minutes. A whole song, really. Ad libs oh, and everything. That's the writer in because you. Because when I write, I practice it, mm. so I don't waste my time and the engineer's time. You know what I'm saying? That's why another reason why I don't get smacked mm-hmm. before I record. Because mm-hmm. a couple times I did get smacked before I recorded. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting there like, uh, yo, people like <laughs> that writer's my favorite. Uh huh. But Okay, so yeah. you said that you would tap into um, basically what you want to hop on, what tracks you want to do a remix to. So, like, what are some songs that are out right now that you feel like you would want to do a remix to? Hmm. Right now? I would say Dusty Lil' King Ratchets. Okay. Because that song is fire. I love the beat switch up and everything. Okay. But I felt like, then I waited a little bit too long to do it. I should have been did it, but... What I do you think? Is the, to... That's what I was gonna say. Like, so, what do you think is the time between when a song drops and when a remix comes out? Like, 
before it gets to be like it too old. It depends on how fire the song is. Like for instance, Bodak Yellow was fire for a little minute. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then you have certain songs. I don't want to. All right. Um, Capella Gray, um, Gallus. Mm-hmm. It was lit for a hot minute, but not as long as Bodak Yellow was hot. If, if that makes sense. So I feel like it depends. Yeah. Because everybody still listen to Gallus, but mm-hmm. not as how long they did was. You, um, did you fuck with um, Chloe Bailey's version of it? Did you hear it? Yes, I did hear it. Like I it? liked it. I feel like um, I did like it. I feel like there was people coming for her and, mm-hmm. you know, they always saying stuff about her, but I did, I did like so it. So do you feel like her dropping her remix was like on time? Like, do you feel like it was good timing? Do you feel like she should have dropped that earlier? Um... Because I personally felt like it came a little late. I feel like because she's Chloe Bailey, it was okay. But she did come a little late. Yeah, because I feel like it didn't even get played as much. Because I feel like, no offense to Capella, we love you over here. But, like, I feel like the song kind of, like, ran its course. Yeah. By the time that her. It was played out. Like, yeah. It was, like, they played it so everywhere. So, by went. the time she dropped it, it was just kind of like, sounds good. You have a great voice. but right. Yeah. No, I hate you. <laughs> All right, so do you think that, like, when it comes to mainstream music, I know, like, you just dropped a, a nice little sexy song, but you also mm-hmm. have a lot of hard lyrics, too, where you really talking that shit. Mm-hmm. Do you think that, like, there's a place in mainstream for female artists who are, like, really talking that shit? Or yeah, d- I yeah. do. And I feel like I want to be that person if it's not there. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's room for that. You know, mm-hmm. why not? Because I feel like, yes, I respect to all, you know, besides Nikki, of course, I'll say she's lyrical. Kim, lyrical. Um, um, we spoke about Doja Cat. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's rappers who be, like, on they pretty shit. And I feel like we need a rapper that's, like, pretty as hell, but spitting that fire shit. Like, right. You know what I'm right. saying? I feel like, you know. Yeah. And, and that, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's fucking shit. So, do you think it's harder coming up in this industry as a woman than it is? No. I man? feel like it was harder <clears throat> before. But the type of rapper I am, yeah, I want to be sexy, but I don't like to do the whole ass out. Mm. So, you know, I get sexy, you see my little seat through, you know what I'm saying? I do mm-hmm. a little something, but I try not to do too much. Cause you I'll, still leave something to be desired. Exactly. At the end of the day. So, I feel like. It's harder if you're not doing that, Mm -hmm. in my experience. Do you find that, like, because you are very pretty, and I feel like, you know, I see, like, on Instagram, you know, you be taking your pictures and stuff. Do you feel like you run into situations with guys in this industry where they don't really take you as seriously as you want No, I feel like they all take me seriously and they want to work, but as as soon as I shut it down... That's what they I don't see. Work. That's what I was about to yeah. say. Like, is it they want to work or they want to work? They want to put it on work at the same because time. Don't get me wrong. Some of these females be out here wilding. Oh yeah. So they be used to that. Mm-hmm. But then they run into me and they don't. They don't expect it. Right. So they be like, oh, all right. And then I might fuck around and be competition for them. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Mm-hmm. So I get that vibe all the time. So that's happened to you. Uh, plenty a of few times. times. I met. A lot of celebrities, as far as like different events. Oh, let's do a song. Let's do this. Da da da. And certain things didn't happen because of I feel like, you know, I'm, I don't be with the shits. Right. So how do you go about formally like hopping on a track or reaching out for a feature or something like that without that? Bunch you know what's of shit crazy, and this is why I love. I believe in a higher power, God. I'm very spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I come in. I spit, and I get respected. Because I have certain fe- people, certain features that I have, like, is it happened naturally. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to speak on what's coming out, but I got some, some, Ooh, some heavy. It sounds like, yeah, like, sound like it's some heat. a heavy in hitter in the industry. Okay. And it's coming out, and, um, you know, something like that, it happened just off, based off of who I was, and mm-hmm. they respected me as an artist and my music. So I've definitely ran into those as well. Okay. But, I love that for you. Yeah. Okay, so I see, like, when you be outside, you be at a lot of these showcases, and, like, it seems like, I don't want to say you're by yourself, but, you know, you it just be you on stage, and, I mean, this is a very male-dominated industry, so how do you make sure that you have that confidence going up there and, you know, like, doing crazy? your thing? When I was younger, I was a dancer. I have a whole trophy for, yes, for dancing hey. and stuff like that. They used to keep me in the front, you know, uh-huh. and certain girls Oh, because when you were in the front middle, yeah. you already know the vibes. That was uh-huh. me. So I always, and somebody, I forgot who it was, one of the teachers taught me, 
Like, you scared, you nervous, look at the exit sign. Yep. So every single time I perform whatever, big stage, da, 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 I always act like it's an exit sign and I just look through people. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, um, I'm never nervous. Like, I'm just always, I'm ready to, I've been, I've been doing shows since 2015. Mm. I could. I probably did like a thousand shows. So I'm so comfortable on the stage. Like it's nothing for me. Mm -hmm. So do you feed off of the energy of the crowd? Or are you just that? And I get in my own bag okay. and I give them. That's the what energy. I was gonna ask because I I wanted to know like at some of these showcases the crowd be dead. I'm not even gonna what? lie. And when not they are even... dead, like I could tell they yes. be dead, but they be like, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes. Wow! And you they, see, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. Now I was about to say they look at me and then think I'm not gonna spit what I spit. Right, right. And that's what I was gonna say. Like, has it been a time like the crowd has kind of been like, mm. Mad times. and then as you going, they like, oh shit, Mad times. And even as I'm going, it's still because people behind drunk. Yeah, it's like one of those intimate settings, people chilling. Mm -hmm. But I still get feedback no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if it don't be like ah. It's like I always, when I get off stage, it's a dap. Yo, people want to add me on Instagram. Right, right. Okay, so you just dropped, I mentioned it already, but you dropped a nice little sexy single mm -hmm. called What's Your Fantasy? So tell me about how that came about. So basically, like, you know, these samples are going crazy everywhere. Right. So I was like, what's a sample that um, I could do and it's going to go crazy? So I hit up. Um, well, actually, my manager, Tosh, she hit me up. Um, I mean, she linked me with these producers or whatever. They bodied um, the track, by the way. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, can you do What's Your Fantasy? Because I love old school music. Like, if you look at my playlist, I got mad old school stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, can you re uh, sample this and do it on a drill beat? He did it. And then I just channeled Ludacris. Like, oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And then doing a video, I was like, I don't never do I do sexy stuff, but I don't ever get crazy. Uh huh. And I wanted to make it spicy, so I was like, "Yo, Dusty, yeah." Because I was gonna ask Cause people about gonna be that looking too. like Dusty. Why Dusty did? And you know what I'm saying? He's relevant. He's a dope artist. Yeah. You know, I respect him. Shout out to my boy Dusty. And I was like, "Yeah, it made sense." And I was like, so wondering that girl. I'm not even gonna lie. I was like, Dusty not even in the song. So what he doing in the video? Right? What's going on here? I wanted to make it spicy. I wanted people to like, oh, what's going on? Like, uh -huh. that was the point. Okay, yeah. and and I mean the video looked like a vibe. It looked like y'all had a lot of fun. Yeah. So so I know you just dropped a new song. What's your fantasy? Yeah. And in lieu of the title, I'm gonna play a little game with you. Okay. Okay. So you got your cup ready. So this is how we're gonna do it. I looked up the top ten fantasies that women have, mm -hmm. or some of them at least. Okay. And I want you to tell me if you have ever or would do what I say. Okay. Now, you could take a little sip if you don't want to answer, but I'm going to limit you to three. Okay. Okay. All right. So, being a stripper or putting on a show? Putting on a show? Putting on a show, like doing a strip tease. For, okay. Am I, doing, am, am I going too deep for mad people or for one person? No, just for one person. If that's your thing or two. Whatever. I would... Um, <laughs> 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 I would do a strip tease. You would do a strip yeah, tease? Okay. And I said or one. two because that leads me to the next one, which okay. is threesome. I would never have a threesome. Really? Why? Let me tell you why. Only because for me, maybe I didn't have enough fun in my life. <laughs> but for Why me, like, if I'm having sex with a guy, I have to like him and I have real feelings for him. Okay. So to watch him fucking another female, I'm going to be like... Okay. I mean, that's on that episode on Melanie um, on the game. She was like, <laughs> she changed her mind. That's going to be me. I feel like I could understand that, especially if it's your man. I mean, I don't, let me not say that because I know that people do like that. But I for also. <laughs> May, I got to see. I wonder if it's a guy that I don't really like that, like that, that I'm, I don't know. But it had to be with another female. I would never do a, a threesome with two guys. Totally agree. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Role reversal or trading places? Road reverse. I mean, role, role reversal. reversal. Trading places on some usher shit. No, I'm saying it like it's the same thing. Yeah. Like trading places on some usher shit. Like you oh, yeah. the dominant one this time or. Well, I be, I'm like. You like that. I'm the dominant. Yeah, I'll say. Um, yeah. I'll say okay. Yeah, I okay. 
BDSM, which is like, you know, getting tied up, oh. whips and all of that. See, ah. they be going deep into that. I don't know if I would do that. Would I do that? I don't know. I'm a little maybe with my man if he don't OD, but he can't be. That's no what rough, I was saying. I'm a little, shit. I'm a little nervous because be some no people rough. be dragging it. Yeah, low key. I might, I might. It depends. There's limits to that. Right? Okay, okay. Give me a safe word or something. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapples. Okay, sex in public, like in a public space. I've done that. Okay, now I feel like when it comes to this question, even when you're playing like Never Have I Ever, I feel like there's a lot of confusion when it comes to public. Like, what do you consider public? Do you consider like a car to be a public place or? Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes and no. But um, I like would a say park, public like place is like somewhere that you can get caught. By what somebody. about a plane? Would you join a mile high club? I would do that, but I haven't. I would definitely I would like, do that. I feel like I get it in theory, but I I just can't like You're picture to do it, it in my mind. Something like that. No, it's thing? no. I think it could be any time, like during a fight. No, I've never done it. But to mm-hmm. me, it's like unless you want a PJ, I can't see myself like in a public Delta. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it's too small. Yeah, like I. You know what is crazy though? I might just do it only for the experience. We've seen movies and shows, and if mm-hmm. that's your nigga, nigga, like not just like if you right. want some just having fun. No. You might want to be a little spontaneous one day. All right. Well, I feel like I know your answer to this next one based on what you already said. Um, Partner swapping. I don't know. I don't think I would. Would I do it? No, I don't think so. I'm I'm jealous. I don't know what you want. Yeah, I I figured that. And I'm the type of person, like, especially if I um, end up not having a connection with the other person, I'm definitely be tight like, mm-hmm. no yeah there has to be some kind of genuine yeah connection or attraction or both yeah, yeah. okay um being watched hmm Just watch it. i've done it before <laughs> you you've watched or you've been watched i've been watched and what? but it was like by accident it was my very close friend she was with someone as well and okay, like, it was I guess one of those. I, like you know, one of those nights where mm-hmm. you too smacked, you mm-hmm. with your nigga, and you comfortable, mm-hmm. be all close, and it was one of those nights. Okay, 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 shit. I'm just. <laughs> this is about you, not me. All right, role play, role play. Yeah, I would do. I've, have I ever done it? No, I've never done it. What would, What would you like role play as? Like, if you had to come up with like something right now, like what would it get? What would you off the top of my head? I, it might be cliche, like a nurse taking yeah, care of you, or a like nurse, um, or a teacher, or like a plumber, a plumber. Or a teacher. That was not one that I was a expecting. A plumber, up, pull up with the plunger, swinging it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see the vision, but I've you never heard it before. Uh, no, maybe I need something. <laughs> Yo, the Henny got my sister. Yeah, why y'all got? Mad funny. So I know that I said I looked up ten, but I only included eight because I want you to give me two of your fantasies that you would like to explore. I've never all right. Well, you know I'm about to blow up, so this might not happen, but like I have a nine to five. I've never had sex at work. Mm. Like, I've never done that. I think okay. that would be a cool thing. be a little risque. Yeah, I've never done that. I would do that. And um, I've never had sex in the water. I would mm. like to do that. Wait, now, when you say water, do you mean, like, a big body of water or, like, shower? So, the no. The I shower count? had shower sex. No. Okay, but you mean, like, the I like mean, ocean see, I wouldn't do the ocean because, cool. like, obviously, ocean water, no. I don't think I would do that. <laughs> But the pool, I would try. See, I don't even know about the pool, to be honest. You're right. Mm-hmm. I feel the like either one shit, God is damn just it. like a... All right, let's uh, just do bath water. Perfect. I don't think I did bath water. Okay. Shower, but not the tub. There you go. Like a ja- like the jacuzzi or... Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So we're going to get back <laughs> We're gonna get right back into that yeah, now that I'm we right. know what your fantasies are. So you definitely said that you felt like what's your fantasy was going to be the song of the summer. Yeah. So in addition to that, what do you think are like the songs of the summer that are out right now? You know, Last Last Burner Boy. Okay. Nice. Shout out to Lori K. Because you definitely that. said that the other day. Um... That for sure. You think I was just about to say, you think FNS Oh my is- God, how did I forget that? See, it's the Hennessy. 
Yes, F and F, that's my song. Shout out to my girl Glow Rilla. She yes, does thing. She really is. What every time thing. that song I'm in it. And that's funny because I was thinking about that when we were having the, the conversation the other day. Lauren had mentioned last last, and I was like, for sure. But I couldn't think of any other song. And I got in my car and was like, hold on. How can I think of this? is like taking the summer nah, over yeah, too. Like, yeah. you're not going nowhere without that song being played yeah, at all. So sure. what do you think it is about a song that can make it like the song of the summer? Like, what is it about it? Um, The hook, honestly. Like, mm. it just has to be catchy and like something that, like, hold on. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah, the hook basically like it's just got to be catchy, engaging. Cause it's know? so crazy that Burner Boy made a freaking heartbreak track. <laughs> it was a breakup song, you know basically, what's crazy? and that shit went crazy. This might be off the record, but Tony Braxton is like somebody I grew up on too because of my mom, uh-huh. and she's like uh, one of the inspirations. That's crazy that we brought that song up. But love Tony Braxton. Yeah, I love her. Okay, so, um. We already talked about Dusty being in the video, and I know that you said you called him up. That's the bro. I know he's in a relationship, so we playing it safe. But, like, is that your type? Is that why you put him in the video? Yeah. Like, yeah. dark skin. Yeah. I love fine. all. <laughs> Listen, let me finish. <laughs> I love all beautiful black men. Okay. All colors. You just got to be... Beautiful, smart, and on your shit. Beautiful, you know smart, on your I shit. I don't mean to say okay. beautiful, sorry, y'all. Handsome. I mean, men can be like, beautiful, too. You know when you be like, you're a beautiful man. That's yeah, a beautiful, yeah, I definitely feel like men yeah. can be beautiful, too. Okay, so when it comes to, like, niggas, are you open to dating niggas in the industry? Is it, like, a... I don't think so. No? But you never know. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are, I mean... People, like, the celebrities that are lit, like, Mm -hmm. you know, they might have a certain way of life. So, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. I might, but my intentions right now, no. Okay. But industry doesn't always have to be, like, artists. It could be somebody who's in the industry that's, like, Like movie Behind the scenes. Or, yeah, even in a movie or something like that. Those behind the scenes, they make the most money. So they, they sometimes like but I they see also be doing they be the one they doing be the toxic thing. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah I don't know I don't think so okay so you wouldn't um, fuck with somebody in the industry have you fucked with somebody in the industry I wouldn't say all right <laughs> what's tea sis what's tea it's not really tea like I don't know okay uh, I, my daughter is nine years old okay shout out to her dad a billion. I would okay. say that's that's the only thing. Other than that, no. Okay, so I'm not gonna sit here in front like I didn't know that. I just <laughs> didn't know. I just didn't know if you were comfortable sharing. Yo, that. I hate her. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know that but because now that, you know I don't really be. I know, but now that you brought it up, because I'm gonna be honest with you, when I was looking you up, I saw I saw that um, there was like a video on YouTube, and it was like a billion a billion's baby mom. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. Oh, girl, I do my I research. Okay. I was like, oh, no. And and you know what? I didn't think that there was anything wrong with that because I feel like you've established yourself and you've created, you know, a name for yourself outside of who you had a kid with. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious to know what you think about that baby mom culture, because I think that that's become a thing now. Where it's like a lot of rappers have baby moms who like get famous off of being the baby mother of a rapper. Yeah. And I'm interested in knowing like what do you think about that? I think it does happen a lot, but shout out to the women who even if it did happen like that and mm-hmm. you elevated yourself, shout mm-hmm. out to you. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some women who are just known for that and are not elevating themselves and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whatever. But I wanted to take a different route. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um and just build my own brand, like, from scratch. like Yeah, and I think that that's dope. And I think that you have done that. Like I said, you've established yourself outside of that. And I think that that's the most important part. When you're Chrissy, the artist, yeah. Chrissy Vance, and not just, like, Chrissy yeah. who had a baby with so-and-so. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of that and, like, your independence, I know that you are not signed. No. And you said something along the lines of, like, it would cost, like, one million to sign me or something like that. You said in the song. I did. So, like, is that really what it would take? Um, yeah. Would, yeah? Yeah. 
You know why? <laughs> because like I've been like yes, I'm underground. Yes, I'm still up and coming. But I've done. So, I have a song with a boogie at the time he had the number one album in mm-hmm. the world or the nation. One of them, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, like, besides that, like, I put out good music. Like, I I do shows, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, I'm the perfect package. I just need, I'm, I'm it's coming. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Things I wasn't coming. even asking in terms of, like, what you're worth, the one million part. It's oh. just, like, when I hear one million, I'm like, damn, that's a hard You know why? Because I feel like, like I'm going to get you back and then some. All I need is that machine behind me for real. So, it's like, I have everything. I have the look and the talent, and I feel like, what I've been through has built me mm-hmm. or, you know. So what yes. do you look for when it comes to, like, a label? Like, what is it that they would need to have in order in order for you to change your mind? Or not even change your mind, but for you to decide to sign to them? So they would be definitely have to give a good amount of advance money, right? Mm. And I don't want to be stuck in something for years. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, your contract would have to be... Like I would like me, I could get in the studio anytime. So I could put out if you want to do three albums for this amount and blah blah. blah I could do that, but mm-hmm. I just want to make sure that like it makes sense. You not, you know, a lot of these artists been through. I don't want to be that. Yeah, artist. Yeah, so a lot of them get fucked. As long as like you know, I got my lawyers and I got my people that's gonna read the contracts. So mm-hmm. as long as it's it's not a three sixty or like something that's gonna put me in a hole, mm-hmm. I'm with it. You know what? You seem to really have, like, a good head on your shoulders. Like, you already mentioned, like, you saving your money, so you seem financially literate and just, like, responsible and on top of, like, yeah. doing your thing. So I just want to, like, shout you out for that. Thank you. That's, I appreciate that's that. That's really, like, a lot of people who are trying to come up are really just focused on getting clout and just getting the bag. Yeah, but yeah. they, but like behind the scenes, it's like, they don't got their shit together. So I definitely want to commend you on that. Thank you. Um, the last time that you was here, you, um, you had said something when asked about like comparing yourself to other artists or something. You said, these artists don't stand for what I stand for. So I want to revisit that now four years later and ask like, what is it that you stand for? Um, what is it that you stand for presently? Like, your non-negotiables. Like, I'm not trying to show my ass in cities. Like, I want to be sexy because that's like, they want all female rappers to do that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's not wrong with being sexy. I show my little, you know, I, I got my little nipple rings. <laughs> I show a little imprint. Uh-huh. show a little bra, you know what I'm saying? A little butt cheek. But I don't want you to, like, I'm only acceptable because my my whole ass is out. My right. thong and I'm twerking and you see my little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to be that. Right. I want to, like, you respect me because I could, I rap better than your father, your favorite rapper, your boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to be respected for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty. Yeah. A lot of pretty females are really just on a pretty shit, and you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I want to show that pretty females could rock with the big dogs, like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Do you feel like you get the attention that you deserve? No. But it's okay. Mm-hmm. It is okay, because I'm still, like, I know a lot of shit is coming, you feel me? And mm-hmm. I know what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just, I just count my blessings as I go. So when when it comes and this is I don't want to stir the pot at all, but like when it stir comes it. when it comes to like <laughs> when it comes to like let's say shout out to Gabe and Order Radar, but like the lady cipher, um, you know, women are oh. holding down New York and mm-hmm. stuff like that right now. Do you how do you feel like seeing that and like not being a part of that, not being a part of like the list that come out? So when I saw the site, I said, fuck out of here. They ain't hit up Chrissy Bands. Like, I'm Brooklyn. I'm New York. Like, are you dumb? Mm-hmm. But I also, I'm not dumb. I know it comes with the clout and, you know what I'm saying, certain connections as well. Mm-hmm. Plus, there was three women that I fuck with hard. Billy B, uh, Lola Brooke, and Kay Goddess. So out, I love out. them. Mm-hmm. And they always show love. So I was like, I wasn't salty about it at all. But I did say... I think I wrote under it, too. Like, hey, I forgot Chrissy Benz, but it's all right. Because mm-hmm. they was really like New York, Brooklyn. Like, I'm supposed to be a part of that. Right. But I wasn't mad about it. I was just like, <laughs> I'm going to show you something. Yeah, you use it as, you know, yeah. counting me out, but you're going to see what's, yeah. what's to come. Yeah. I like that. Like, instead of letting it get you upset, you use it as motivation. Exactly. So do you feel like you get 
Um, you mentioned three of the New York ladies already, but do you feel like you get recognition from like your fellow like female artists? Yeah, the like those three ladies, they definitely show me love. We follow each other on Instagram. Always show when I see them, it's always love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Other other female rappers though no I think I'm a threat to them mm. I'm not gonna say any names is so don't like, ask me is it on I won't ask you see I said I'm stirring the pot a little bit but not but that but there much. are certain females I feel like are very threatened by me do you feel yeah. that like through social media is like an in person thing like how no can you, never in person how can you tell when somebody feels that way against you you don't because gotta say who I'm about. used to certain love mm. and when you don't give it when you. When you know someone saw something, or you know someone saw, even maybe it was in person, maybe, whatever. But the point is, mm -hmm. when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, there's certain females that don't even want to sit next to me because they know they can't. I hear that. Talk your shit, sis. Talk your shit. Uh -huh. Just saying. So you, <laughs> you said something like, stop telling Stop telling your friend that she could, that they could rap. Oh my god! And I wanted to talk to you about that. Okay. Because I'm interested to know, like, at what point do you take? Because you know, some people are very hard taking criticism, even if it's constructive. Yeah. So, like, at what point do you think it's beneficial to like tell somebody that they can't rap versus? See, it's easier said than done. I know I said that, but. I've never been able to say that to someone. Right. There's people that I know and... Oh, sorry. It's a Hennessy. I'm burping. <laughs> but there's people that I know and, like, I even follow. And, you know what I'm saying? They do music or just started doing music mm -hmm. a few years ago or now or whatever. And I'm just like, they, it's horrible. Yeah. And I'm just like, Damn. I wanna, I wanna support because you supported me. But it's like you're not giving like, me much to work with here <laughs> at all, and I don't want to be mean at all. But it's just, it's not made for everybody. Everybody so gonna do it. At what point, like when you making music, at what point do you feel like it's like, all right, give it up? Like, how long do you feel like you have to keep making trash music See, before you gotta let oh. it go? Like, I feel like the first song, if it's not good, like, not you the should first just, song. All the right, first all right, song all right. is yeah, maybe, All right. The first song is OD. No, the reason why I say that is because, all right, if you put that first song out and people don't like it, who's going to take you serious? You got to put out something that, you know, people going to engage in. All right. So if, if back to your question, I would say, okay, the third one. Okay. If you couldn't get it by the third song, it's like, stop. <laughs> Come on. I just feel like, damn, because, like, that doesn't give any time to grow. What if on oh, that yeah, third song that, somebody that. was like, all right. No, but let me tell you something. I could play you my first rap. But that's you because you're a writer and you knew how True. to do poetry and they was screaming True. and clapping when you did your first poem. True, but we're... So you can't compare right. yourself. But but we in a day and age now, like, if you don't get it right by the first 10, 15 seconds, nobody wants to hear I mean, you. yeah, that's a fact. So that's just what it is. When we do these open mics, these showcases, like, it, it depends on what you first say. Nobody's going to sit there and listen. People be talking. Look at me. They think yeah. I'm going to do some... Regular rap shit when they see me. It's not until I really start spitting, they be like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, what TikTok. you think about, what you think about TikTok stars? Um, as far as like them. Like, a lot of TikTok stars I know have like started being, make, they started making music. Like, you know, oh. a lot of them trying to like join. I mean, see, the, it's crazy that you say TikTok stars. Like, everybody, like, it can happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Some people get lucky. It, like. So I just commend everybody. I don't really, like, it's funny that you asked that question. I don't really have an answer to it because if you made a video on TikTok and mm -hmm. you just blew up and now you, like, um, the African guy. The African guy. He does videos like you you show a hat. Oh, my God. He'd be like. And he'd be like, you could have just did this. <laughs> yeah. I love him. Yeah. Like, he, it was overnight. So yeah. it's like, if that happens for you, cool. But. If he's if he's nice, if he's nice, I'ma fuck with it. I if mean, he's trash, bro. All right, y'all want me to y'all want me to get mixy? Who cool, get want mixy? Me to get mixy? All right, it's your turn to stir the pot. Let's go. All right, I'ma name two people. I love them both, but why? Uh oh. They're famous. Okay. Beautiful. Mm hmm. India Love. Okay. And Black China. Love okay. both of them. 
Mm-hmm. But what are you doing? Like, don't just, you know what I'm saying? You know what? I am not going to push back on that. And, and I actually realized that. Shout out to India, because India was the oh, original she, I Instagram get my baby model. Like, I remember Tumblr what? days. A lot of people don't give her enough homage. Yes, yeah, nobody really like, homage. acknowledges that. She was that girl before mm-hmm. that girl was mm-hmm. even a thing. But I will say, she was somebody that I really wish that she would have done something once she got the attention that she was getting. Like, bro, you're not telling me you couldn't start a business, start doing something. Like, because now niggas know India for dating. It's like, oh, yeah, she was with the game. She was yeah. with this person. She's with the, the boxer now. Yeah. But it's not even on some, like, okay, she came up. She's and doing now this. She's, she's doing, doing that. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's really what I wish that she would And that she would that's get. the thing. You see how beautiful she is? Yep. Like, and I mean, she's if in the I, show now. Oh, yeah. She's on no, that beach. She had show. the shows with her sisters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember. I love her to death. No shade to her. But I just feel like if I was in her position, mm-hmm. like, I would have tried to do, like, a lot more. And this is no shade to India, because we, we just see your potential, girl, if you happen to be watching this. No, We just see what you can bring to the table. Constructive criticism. Absolutely. So, what would you say so far has been, like, the highlight of your year? Of if this you year? had to pick one, yep. I would say the, um, the What's Your Fantasy video. Mm. I feel like I revamped myself. And, and being around Dusty, like, he's a, he's a new artist. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's getting a lot of attention. And I just feel like coming from the situation with my ex-manager and stuff like that, I feel like I, like you said about the revamp, and I didn't revamp, but I felt like that was my first single Mm -hmm. separating from that. Mm -hmm. And I was with a dope artist, and a lot of attention was on me because of it. You know what I'm saying? It's still on me. Yeah. It was playing on Hot 97. Shout out to my boy Drewski. Yeah. Shout out Drewski. It was lit. But, um. Okay, so that was the highlight. For this year so far, yeah. Okay. So, like, let us know, like, what you got coming. What can- All right. So, what can we look forward to this year? I know you say you got a heavy hitter on an on album or on a track that, you know, you didn't disclose. Yeah. You think we can get a little hint or something who it is? So, all I'm going to say is he's from Philly. Oh, okay. Because Philly is Definitely doing their thing right a now. A heavy hitter in the industry. Yes. Shout out to them. Okay. Um, now, sis, you know, we... We've been getting along real good since we've been sitting here, I would say, right? Yes. What's your sign? But I'm an Aries. Oh, God. You sound like Lori. You're Aries? Yes. My daughter's an Aries. Oh, I'm a Leo. Leo. Okay. I don't know much about Leos, but I'm sure I have someone in the building who definitely <laughs> knows because she's our Zodiac girl. She, she know all of that stuff. But I just set the stage because I kind of had a little problem with something that you said. Uh-oh. Okay. <clears throat> let's get into it. So you had made a video and you was like how women need to stop acting like niggas and stop drinking the Casamigos. And if y'all can't see. No, that's not what I meant. That's what's right. in the cup. Let me tell you something because I drink Casamigos. What I meant is we, uh, us women, we've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And most of it, not all of it, most of it has been because of our decisions and the men we choose, you know, things like that. So I would say, this is what I always say, Mm -hmm. listen to me carefully. Unless she's a hoe and she likes to just do hoe things, Mm -hmm. she's being a hoe because a guy broke her heart. Am I lying? So when you say don't act like a nigga, it means like in terms of like... Because these girls is out here, they want to put their hands on a nigga. Oh, I'll punch that nigga in the face, right? Mm-hmm. Put their hands on a nigga. They want to beat a nigga as far as like, um, yeah, like, all right, damn. The See, Hennessy got me. Why are you thinking, I'm going to just say, it's hard for women, not, and I'm not saying that what you said is wrong. Uh-huh. You're not wrong. Uh-huh. But I feel like it's hard for women not to be the niggas of today when niggas want to be treated like women so bad. Like, I feel You're like... You're absolutely right. I feel like they... The the dynamic has changed so much. You know what's much. crazy? You're absolutely right. But in my experience, right? Because it's like... It's, it's niggas, boys, and then there's men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And some women... They dwell on what they've been through, what they last nigga put them through. Mm-hmm. They want to be toxic so bad. Don't put your hands on a nigga because when he punch you the fuck in the face, you're going to be crying, boo-hooing. A lot of these bitches want to be abusive. A lot of these bitches want to be crazy with their knives and shit like that. 
That's what I mean. Keep it cute. And if you got a problem, just leave. Don't let a nigga get exactly. you out your bag. Exactly. That's like, what you were These bitches want to be the tre- cheaters. They just out for these niggas with their money. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. However, it's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Don't just sit there and be like, if he's a good nigga, you know what I'm saying? Don't be just being a gold digger. Like, right, right. Bitch, like, there's this guy. He do this YouTube thing. He be gold digging and stuff like that. I mean, searching for gold diggers. He'll act like he's oh, I regular. Those. I hate those. And videos. then... When she dub him, he'll walk to his car, mm-hmm. and then the bitch will walk back. Mm-hmm. I would never do that. Me either. You know how many niggas try to talk to me in their cars? You better off bagging me on the street than in a car. Mm-hmm. I mean, and after that, I feel like it's no way I'm a W. And my pride just will not let me turn around and be like, oh, that's exactly, your car. Exactly, because oh, they are no, used to that. And, they, and, and not even just that, it don't impress me. Mm-hmm. Because what the fuck you driving don't fucking pay my bills? And half the time, it don't even be theirs if you really want to talk and, about it. Exactly. <laughs> it don't even be their car. And it's like, <laughs> um, so. Yeah. I could go I know on forever you, with that. I know, topic. that's what I was about to say. I know you got stuff to do after this. I'm not going to keep you here for too long. But um, I know what we expecting. Is there anything else that you want to just talk about, get off your chest while we got you here? Um, I just want to say, like, you know, be yourself. Don't let what you see on social media, you know, define how you're going to be as a person or. Like, don't try to impress nobody. Just be yourself. And if if they not, if it's not given, then do something else. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop trying to be down with what. Mm-hmm. Everything is not for I'm you. I'm tired of a fake. Yo, this year, I could go on forever. This- <laughs> we going to have to have a part yeah. two. We're going to have to have you back. It's a lot of fake stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, it's, it's not a lot of real ones left. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just be real. That's a word. Authentic. Authenticity is mm-hmm. definitely key. Shout out to my manager, Talks with Tosh. Uh, we outside, you know. Yes. Um, shout out to my boy Drowsy, big step up. Drowsy been providing the, team, the sound no, effects this whole interview. When I don't know. I went heard through it. the stuff with my ex manager. Like this is a team that came and gave me the support that I needed. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And. Yeah, we about to make some That's big dope. moves. That's so. what's up. Well, shout out to Talk of the Town. Yes, a shout out to you, Chrissy. Yes. Thank you for coming back. It was so good having you. This was such a good conversation. Thank you. Yes, it was. And yeah, thank y'all for watching. We off this. We outside. <laughs>